All right, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to some structure-free learning. And here we're going back to some engineering dynamics or really some basic physics and, and doing some a projectile motion problem here where uh, if I'm a golfer, and I try to be, right? But here, if I am if I can hit the golf ball with my driver at uh, 70 meters per second upon impact at an angle of 10 degrees here, I want to know how far it's going to travel this distance D if the ground is inclined at five degrees here and I'm gonna neglect things like air resistance and the pin height and stuff to solve this problem but the first thing that we need to do here really is establish an origin that is first and foremost and that will help us define all of our variables and and and, and our equations here but so for my origin I'm just gonna choose this reference right here this point where my golf ball start, starts off this will be my zero and this horizontal will represent my plus X and upwards will represent my plus Y orientation here and so once I've I've established my reference then I can go ahead and set up or calculate define some initial values okay and these initial values are things like the velocity in the x direction v0 x so it's the x component of this velocity here which is just or the magnitude of this x component of velocity is v0 cosine of 10 degrees and then I have v0 y the y component of this is v0 sine of 10 degrees and all this means is I'm just taking this velocity vector and breaking it up into my x and y components right here also the thing I want to define is my initial starting point right here this is where where my projectile starts from I'll call this x0 y0 and this is where I land I'll call that y oops x f y f my final positions and so here based on my selection of origin I have x0 equals 0 and y0 equal to 0 and here based on the way that my ground is and everything my fine you know this whole thing right here I want to define this distance D traveled in the XY components as well and so if I were to look at this I would say that the horizontal distance traveled is just this distance right here and my vertical distance traveled is just this distance right here and so you will see that here this distance traveled right here is this yf and this distance horizontal distance traveled this xf and that's just a right triangle you know if I compare with this green and red line this angle is just five degrees right here and so that just tells me that xf is D cosine of five degrees and YF moves down or in the negative Y direction so this would be minus D sine of five degrees let's, not, let's put some parentheses here okay and so I have once I have these initial values if you've watched my previous video on just describing projectile motion every projectile motion problem really just ends up as two equations two unknowns right here and so let's let's go ahead and see how we get there and so if I the thing I want to do now is look at the various directions of motion there's only two directions of motion either in the X or in the vertical motion okay horizontal and vertical motion so let's take a look at let's go horizontal motion first so one two three horizontal motion to the right is positive right here and what I know about my horizontal motion is that my acceleration in the X direction is zero I have no horizontal acceleration that makes my velocity in the X constant which is just the initial velocity or the X component of initial velocity which is V0 cosine of 10 degrees but this still isn't the the important thing if I take another antiderivative or integrate if you will I would get that the, my X my final X position is equal to X0 plus V0 XT and here this x0 is 0 and I have v0 xt already so this just tells me if I substitute into some values here I would get that this equation right here is this d cosine of 5 degrees let's make sure that looks like a 5 5 degrees is equal to 0 this x zero, the initial position was 0 as we figured out over here and this v0 x is just v0 cosine cosine of 10 degrees times t 
So there's my, my first equation right here. Now for my vertical motion, vertical motion, I, this is positive upwards and my acceleration in the Y is gravity. So that's a minus G has a, you know, it's in the negative, it's downward. So it's negative G right here. And so if I integrate this, this would give me V, V, Y is equal to V zero Y minus G T. And then if I integrate once more, I get Y F is Y zero plus v zero y t minus one half g t squared and if again if I substitute into this last equation here I will get that y f is minus d sine of five degrees is equal to y zero which is zero so that's easy that was zero plus v zero y which is v zero sine of ten degrees times t minus one-half g t squared and what I'm left with here is two equations and two unknowns so here this d cosine five degrees equation is this horizontal position equation is my first equation and here my horizontal my vertical position equation is my second equation if I look at this right here I have let's see one unknown is d I know cosine no v0 this is just 70 meters per second I know cosine of 10 degrees, obviously. And then this t is time is also an unknown. And if I look over here, I have d is my unknown. I know sine of 5 degrees. I know this is 70 meters per second. I know degrees. Here's my time again as an unknown. My g is 9.81 meters per second squared. And then here's time again. And I have essentially now I have two equations, two unknowns. Yay! That means you can solve it just by plugging. So solve for t, substitute into here, and you'll get d. And the answers are d is equal to 256.58 meters, and t is equal to 3.708 seconds. Right here. Here are my answers and my dream of being able to drive a golf ball that far. But I guess the incline kind of helps. Anyway, I'll see you later. Hopefully that was helpful. See ya.